posted on LinkedIn uh, where you talked about losing your father, yes, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, when did this happen? And then, what is that you felt that suddenly missed out of your life at that point of time? I miss his wise counsel uh, because he literally taught me everything. Uh, how do you handle yourself in corporate? So a lot of learnings and that also shaped my thought process and I wrote my book on career excellence. Students from college, they did suicide and where do you think is the missing link? Because you know, three suicides, uh, three or four, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In one month. It feels very sad as a society we are failed. I think the peer pressure, the show off culture, uh, show off. Show off. They love to show off and the TikTok culture, everything on social media. Yeah, yeah. And I am successful. Even there was a recent study which said uh, people who spend more time on LinkedIn, they mm -hmm. develop that inferiority complex that I am not doing anything at all worthwhile. Good Academic day. brilliance is no barometer for how successful you are in your life Absolutely. Today. What would you suggest or what is that the parent should do? You know, how they should bring up the child or what should they teach them? so that they are better prepared to handle these type of situations. What's your recommendation or suggestions to them? So do you see that people sort of get into a particular uh, subject just because they find someone as a role model and so whatever he is doing, I have to do? Or is it like because I am interested in this subject? There is a third category which is force. My dad wanted me to be an engineer, so I am here. Otherwise, oh, I don't care. True. My interest is in wildlife photography. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that three idiots, no? The yeah, photographer exactly. Parhan. Exactly. Yeah, okay, okay. So there are people like that as well. So I think you should find your passion and do it for yourself rather than uh, because someone told me to or I want to be like him. Rapid fire. Rapid fire. <laughs> yes. So, Dr. Ram, one secret about yourself that probably <laughs> no one knows or maybe very few of them know. I uh, have many secrets. <laughs> <laughs> no. so, uh, hello and welcome to all. This is Deepak Singh and you are with me on the show Resilient Root. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today I have the honor to talk to one of the most uh, reputed, one of the most decorated one of the most uh, well-known person, personality, leader in the industry, uh, which is security and resilience. Uh, and this person is not just that, but he is a role model for many. And ladies and gentlemen, with that, I present to you Dr. Ram Kumar. Thank you so much, Dr. Ram Kumar, for being there. My pleasure and honor to be here. Thank you. Uh, I mean. When we started this, we thought that, you know, I think we need to have a person, at least in the first episode, someone who is well known and most respected, right, which you are. And that's why we thought that, I mean, it would be appropriate. So thank thanks you. for accepting our invitation. Now, uh, before we start, I just wanted to understand when did this Dr. Ram Kumar happen? <laughs> sure. Um, before I answer that, uh, let me... Thank you for inviting me or Pleasure. having me in this uh, uh, session. It's an amazing uh, name, Resilient Root. I must uh, appreciate uh, you for that. A lot of thought uh, process has gone into picking up this name. I Absolutely. think in the current uh, uh, scenario, it's very important that we need to be resilient given the uh, prevailing scenario, uh, both in career and in personal uh, lives. So uh, again, thanks for having me here. And uh, yeah, your question is pretty much uh, pertinent. Um, my doctorate is more of the ambition is more of uh, uh, from a career continuity perspective, mm -hmm. uh, right? Just like we are doing business continuity, business continuity. plan, mine yeah. is more for uh, career continuity planning because uh, uh, beyond a point, uh, because of uh, you become expensive for the corporates. Uh, become too old, uh, corporates anyway get bored of uh, senior leaders. <laughs> so uh, the best way is to mentor and teach uh, young professionals and students. Okay. So with that in mind, I started my doctoral journey uh, way back in 2012, 13 times. 2012, okay. And then I uh, specialized in information security governance mm -hmm. uh, at Alliance University at Bangalore. And uh, it's been a very amazing journey going through uh, different uh, phases of the uh, research uh, journey 
uh, and a lot lot of learning and finally uh, when i got my uh, you know go ahead from my professors at a panel of professors when i did my final uh, uh, viva uh, my thesis presentation uh, it felt it felt very surreal when they mm -hmm. all congratulated me okay. a lot of hard work and uh, uh, you know dedication had gone in the final few years of my phd and i felt it was worth it it's a very long journey for of course, phd of course. Jobs, <laughs> course phd is not that easy, easy to do anyway it's not right? easy <laughs> kind of intellectually very challenging and also you feel a lot of uh, uh, satisfaction when you come out of that uh, mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. so in 2020 i completed and mm -hmm. uh, from then uh, life has been very different uh, in terms of i also uh have a leg uh, uh you know i got a toe hold in the academic world mm -hmm. and now uh, because of the new uh, nep new education policy also uh, government is pushing for more industry academia collaboration yeah yeah i yeah. feel uh, who's the best person to teach uh, uh, international relations is none other than an ifs officer or a diplomat mm -hmm. but just because they don't have a phd you can't keep them away Uh, so they okay, want okay. more industry leaders and experts to come and teach in uh, them yeah so a lot of uh, universities want uh, professionals like us to go and teach and phd is an added attraction for them because uh, they absolutely are, i mean there is a lot of <laughs> credibility and reputation that gets built when True. you do a phd right because <laughs> not everyone can do it of True. course so you know yeah. if you have done a phd then you know you get that reputation True. of course exactly so good to know that uh, but uh, i mean how was it i mean was there a support that was from your organization also at that point of time yeah my uh, companies uh, i mean over a period of 6 uh, 7 years all my uh, employers were very supportive and mm -hmm. um, it, it uh, really you know helped me in having that confidence and they have i'm having uh, you know support from the organization that felt okay. good all my reporting managers were very appreciative that you do something beyond work and do but uh, always you know uh, there's always a uh, they treat uh, phd holders at arms distance mm. unless you are in a r&d organization uh, yeah, yeah. so that is no there's no denying about that fact mm. uh, but it felt good when i was doing my phd companies were very my employees were and you were able to manage time uh -huh. tough it was tough initially you have to manage your personal life your uh, professional uh, commitments mm. and your social life then your phd i uh, had a small daughter at that time she was pretty small so whenever you want to <laughs> focus and do some research work you lock the door and comes <laughs> and bangs papa open the door it was pretty tough that way to manage everything but uh, we all learn as we go uh, at the same time there were many moments in my journey where uh, i felt like uh, why am i getting into this? when why, what is it for me and i was almost at the brink of you know dropping out because of the work pressure the phd yeah yeah many times it's always in uh, any phd scholars uh, journey you'll have that graph when they go on a high when the professors yeah, yeah, appreciate yeah. you when things don't go well then you feel why am i getting into this <laughs> trouble what is this for me okay. then always used to think why i enrolled for phd that why kept me uh, going uh, and uh, finally i was uh, i'm happy I, it was a very Completed. resilient journey yeah. resilient, resilient matters and, exactly resilience okay, matters course, right yeah and i i think all these experiences teaches you to be very strong yes of exactly. course you will have challenges but then you know the way you come out yeah, yeah definitely yeah, matter i mean if i want to understand how has been your career all together so how would you convert it into a story and then tell so that you know the listeners and the viewers so what's your career story actually Sure, I started my career in non-IT. I it was oh, you are a non-IT guy. Non-IT person. I come from commerce background. Okay. My dad That's was into finance. <laughs> he was in corporate sector. Okay. So he was a finance professional, and because he was a non, he was a non-chartered accountant. Mm. Uh, he always uh, felt uh, chartered accountants are. Uh, he, all his bosses were CAs, so he mm -hmm. knows the value of uh, CA being the financial <coughs> controller. and she could never become because he's not a qualified ca so he wanted me to be a chartered accountant okay. and uh, late 90s you know when i was doing my bcom graduation he wanted me to do ca mm. so i was uh, enrolled as a ca student i served a audit firm as an article assistant I used to oh. do the financial okay. audits and the files so your that. career also had that part is it initial yeah. part initial before part. it yeah, before yeah, yeah. it happened i was there 
and that was uh, for how many years around 2 to 2 and a half two, years half when years, i okay. knew it is not my cup of tea because i had very <laughs> divergent <laughs> views the typical uh, young for angry young man who is rebellious against uh, what parents say <laughs> i always felt because that time 99 2000 the y2k boom yeah, all yeah, of yeah, ideas, i remember that bpo companies i wanted to be pretty much part of the modern uh, uh, you know <coughs> profession rather than i mean i was never inclined to become a ca but anyway all good it helped me later much later that experience helped me mm. uh, because uh, anyway from financial audit uh, i got into security audits much later okay so <laughs> so after that i dropped out i got into i enrolled into masters program in uh, computer applications then once okay. my pg got over i got my first break uh, after my so PG. this mca was um, a part time thing part time thing because okay. i was already um, you know by the, by the time i decided all admissions were over and i was in a hurry to get on to <laughs> the yeah. computer bandwagon yeah, yeah. it bandwagon yeah. so it was pretty challenging for me but uh, because the mca syllabus was uh, very expansive you can't do it uh, learn all the programming languages and stuff uh, by your own hmm. uh, so i had to enroll for a diploma course in cmc limited that time okay, at okay. nit all the uh, cmc also very popular hmm. so enroll for a one year remember. course for a diploma program where we taught from the basics ms dos to ms office to visual basic java arc <laughs> everything hmm. entire array of program we learned hmm. i got a diploma as well as part of my mca that helped me in my mca projects okay uh, so that was how i got into so post my mca i got a break on merit uh, with a us based isp at hyderabad mm-hmm. uh, called united online uh, my very first job that was probably the only company i applied and they hired me okay and rather uh, me looking forward to uh, row you know a career in cyber security i would rather say cyber security chose me It was destiny oh, okay. which led me to that company yeah, yeah, yeah. and they uh, assigned me to the team for you know security and abuse department uh, that's how i started my career okay. and one interesting um, nugget from that uh, time was my dad worked for an american mnc and his office was in the third and fourth floor of that of that building and uh, my office was in the first and the sixth floor Uh, though it was in terms of the ambience it all looked similar but we are an IT company and this was a non IT company that company used to offer uh, uh, coke they had coke vending machines mm. uh, so uh, we used to in the breaks we used to take a coke uh, you know a glass and come and uh, chill out in the atrium <laughs> area Yeah. all his uh, colleagues were known to me because i've been moving with them so mm. those eras we used to get along as a <coughs> family friends and they all used to bring him sir your son is having coke our company is not giving coke it's a it company they can afford to give we are not it we get only you know the mission coffee <laughs> you know and uh, uh, people used to think that my dad had a role to play in getting a job then we had to do a lot of explaining oh, okay, okay. he is not uh, he doesn't know anyone in it and he got ram got a job on his own on mm. his merit so it was fun going along with him every day it felt like uh, Uh, though i was bit uncomfortable uh, those days to go along with dad like a school boy every day morning go in the same car and come back in the same <laughs> car i wanted to be independent have an identity of my own but today in hindsight yeah those were very golden moments when you went along with your dad and came home together <laughs> but yeah you are right at that point of time i remember because i am an instrumentation and control engineer basically wow. not an it guy but then uh, towards end of uh, i mean towards 1997 98 and up to 2002 2003 a lot of people from instrumentation and control from electrical background who had this industry experience they actually switched to it it yeah, yeah they got into sap they got into you know things like that so yeah i think that time it was booming yeah, so booming, a lot very of much, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, that company gave me a lot of uh, insights into uh, cyber crimes Uh, because a lot of customers used to write in about uh, different sorts of viruses and spamming and all those things it gave me a lot of insights so then i moved to bangalore because bangalore was the most happening place called the silicon valley that time you were in uh, hyderabad hyderabad yeah, right first job okay. was in hyderabad okay so i did my schooling in chennai mm. after that my post my schooling we shifted to hyderabad because okay. dad was posted in hyderabad 
then in uh, bangalore i got my break with a company called uh, acs affiliated computer services mm -hmm. which was later taken over by xerox and much later sold uh, to atos mm. now it is called atos. atos i know yeah yeah so itpl was the in thing to be in in bangalore if you're working and i was already lucky to get a <laughs> posting I there guess. my workplace was in itpl and uh, i was uh, my role was you know handling the email uh, security uh, mm. so though it was uh, given a fancy title like internet gateway administrator okay. for two clients uh, one insurance company and nike so it was fun working there i had a good time there and itpl was a revelation of so many things going on and uh, true, true. I was a pretty fast worker so normally what do you take uh, four five hours i do it in two three hours and then <laughs> got bored of it i kept asking my uh, us based bosses for additional work and uh, it never came but overall i had a great time and i had so much leisure i wrote an, a book i authored a book and oh, got it time. published yeah i got okay. it published so i wrote a book on career excellence in mm. two volumes it came out both hard okay. copy and uh, uh, paperback editions by a delhi based publisher so okay. that was my first uh, and break. today if someone has to get that book is it available it's available in uh, amazon or okay. flipkart Okay. And the uh, second book happened uh, in uh, ACS during my stint. Uh, mm. Very quick, uh, pretty fast. In three months flat, they got it from ideation till uh, publication. So all the uh, you know review of the manuscript, everything happened seamlessly via email. And this is an era there was no social media, no WhatsApp, everything via email. Mm. It was way back in 2005. Uh, when did your journey start with uh, your previous company? Just before. Oh, in uh, 2019, I moved to Trivandrum. Uh, primarily, I wanted to work for a bigger brand like Nissan. Okay. In uh, 2019, uh, I moved to Trivandrum uh, to join Nissan Digital, which is a IT arm of Nissan Motor Corporation. So, I initially joined as a BISO, Business Information Security Officer. Mm -hmm for a few business units but uh, uh, progressively my role expanded to almost all the business units. So BISO was not part of the IT organization? It's very much part it of was. it. It was, okay. Was, was. But so focus was the business? Yeah, yeah, like, for all okay. the businesses which develop uh, applications for. Yeah, uh, oh, okay, okay, stage. got it. So except for manufacturing and uh, connected cars, all other business units, I was uh, BISO. Mm -hmm. Then the, after the pandemic struck, my role also changed. I uh, went on to run the GRC program for them. So I had a great time and uh, pretty recently, uh, I just uh, moved out of Nissan and uh, I just joined. I started uh, with Volvo. Uh, last yeah, Monday. Yeah, we heard that. Uh, so initial days, uh, very good vibes, positive vibes, and very excited good. about the new <laughs> role. It also has pushed me out of the comfort zone. Uh, it's a pretty new portfolio for me in managing vulnerability disclosure. So looking forward to a great uh, time. Yeah, of course, you will do well, no doubt Thank about you. that, and uh, wish you all the best there. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now, um, when we were talking, you talked about your uh, uh, sort of some details about your father and your interactions with him uh, and i remember that there was a post when you actually were leaving nissan you have posted on linkedin uh, where you talked about losing your father yes, right yeah, yeah. so i mean when did this happen and then what is that you felt that suddenly missed out of your life at that point of time yeah, in the second wave of COVID, uh, unfortunately, he was uh, infected with COVID without him realizing okay. uh, he was infected. Rather, he had the second dosage of the vaccination. So he, he had it? He had it. So just he had the second vaccination dose okay. without realizing he already had COVID. So both the viruses okay. created okay. a havoc and had a stroke. And he was in hospital for eight days, unfortunately. That was in it. Bangalore itself? No, no, in my hometown, down okay, south. Okay, and, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. So I had to rush there and uh, take care of him. Uh, very difficult times because of the lockdown and uh, very tough to move around and uh, do everything ourselves. Mm. So it was pretty tough. Uh, in the sense, uh, I miss his vice counsel uh, because he literally taught me everything. Uh, how do you handle yourself in corporate? Because he had a pretty long... Uh, stint in different yeah. companies. Mm -hmm. He started his career in a 
uh, fertilizer giant called Spic. Uh, it was a very popular company in those days. Mm-hmm. And uh, then he moved on to a seed processing company. In between, he dabbled in stock market. He used to be on the floor in Madras Stock Exchange when they used to physically trade shares and oh. just keep screaming, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> ABV like that. So, those days, uh, it was very exciting times too. Yeah, so yeah. I was a teenager uh, when he was in the stock market. And every day used to be like a drilling in rush. Used to <laughs> true, say, true. I make this much money for the client. I sold this. I bought this. Uh, very, very interesting. But again, the stock market is very volatile. And uh, he also had a fair hit of uh, losses in '96 okay, crash. Okay. Then we uh, he went back to employment with the same big group company, and that company was bought over by the American partners mm. uh, and they in turn were bought over by DuPont. So end of the day he became a DuPont employee. So he, he had a very long stint in corporate, he used to tell me uh, how things and that played a very critical role in my thought process and and how I shaped my career, my personality. Because he was so dedicated and people from that generation, they are very naive, yeah. uh, in the sense uh, very true, uh, not that I'm not. Uh, point is, they are very dedicated and to the point of neglecting family. I mean, work is worship kind of. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah. Very, very true to the work and mm. stuff. Even before he was in the staff union, he was a leader and he helped. Uh, oh, okay. uh, the labor union is different, it's a staff union. Mm. He did a lot of good things, but mm. uh, end of the day, you know, being a finance professional, audits are a way of life, handling audits by different auditors. So that was one reason why I wanted my own vehicle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to have a long uh, late night uh, you know, <coughs> work uh, till 11, 12 and then he'll, and I never felt good uh, sitting in his reception or <laughs> waiting for it. Waiting for like a school <laughs> kid. I, I, mean, I was very young and I always wanted to be independent. So a lot of learnings and that also shaped my thought process and I wrote my book on career excellence. Mm. So overall, uh, uh, I miss his vice counsel because uh, in the pandemic times uh, we couldn't be together. Uh, so almost every alternate day I used to call, call him and, and we used to chat for about an hour on anything on the world from Obama to local politics to <laughs> everything. He was very frank and uh, uh, only good satisfaction I had was around six months before he passed away, I went down to his uh, place in down south mm-hmm. and then uh, we to went the native to, place, to my native place. We went and I uh, picked him up, we went to Trivandrum, I vacated my house and I had a rented apartment. A good three days, I took him to the local beach in Trivandrum. These okay. beaches are something he has grown up with and it was a chance for us to bond. Then I dropped him back. So that was pleasant memory. Overall, uh, he's been a great influencer and shaper in my uh, the way I, uh, my worldview, everything is uh, from him. Uh, in fact, uh, he was very happy uh, when he heard I did my doctorate. Okay. Uh, so one point in time, uh, he, he was not very, can you keep on doing so many certifications and studies, when will you stop? Yeah. I said, uh, my career, uh, uh, you know, is in a domain where you need to keep yourself of updated. Course. Because yeah. they all, from his era, it was always about getting a degree or a PG or a, or, and then you stop with that. For him, this was pretty new. Why do you do so many certifications? Mm. What do you get? I have to keep myself up to date, I have to upskill myself, I have to be useful to my company and I have to deliver. For all of this, this upskilling is uh, certifications are a quick way to Very do important, it. very important. So then he realized, but otherwise he was pretty, <laughs> he felt a little, this is not a right thing, you keep on studying, what do you do out of this? You do not become a certification junkie, that's what he was, his thought process was. So okay. overall, uh, my, uh, he's been a big influencer in my life. Yeah. Okay. Now. I know that you know you are well known in the industry and a lot of people know about your professional part of it right being a cyber security leader and things like that information security cyber security resilience uh, i'm sure based on you know the number of uh, teachings or sessions that you do there are a lot of people who aspire to be you know like you now thing is there is always two sides of the coin right there, there is a professional life and there is a personal life so, how is Dr. Ram Kumar in his personal life? How would you explain that? <laughs> well, personal life, I'm pretty laid back and uh, <laughs> and uh, I have my own uh, fun, I catch up on movies and uh, 
uh, I'm pretty chilled out. And what what type of movies you like? Hollywood, Bollywood, or anything, anything that goes by. More into action and uh, okay, comedy okay. films. Okay. Mm-hmm. A big fan of Jackie Chan. Big fan of Rajni Khan, Shah Rukh. <laughs> you name it. All the key heroes I love. Okay. And I do a lot of road tripping. That is very therapeutic. So whenever uh, yeah, yeah, I, I saw in your post that you love uh, driving yeah, vehicles, vehicles, and then you love driving. driving. So, uh, so cars are something a passion from my childhood. <coughs> from my childhood, I've been crazy about cars. All okay. my toys, I had a lot collection <laughs> of cars. So you have a lot of cars as a dog. Okay. <laughs> so that's when I joined Nissan and uh, much now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Volvo, it kind of connects with um, you know, emotionally all the products, of right? Course. and uh, uh, road trips are very very good for me it's a way for me to uh, you know uh, let off steam a kind of a stress buster hmm. i okay. mean across uh, south india and don't dare to go on a long drive though we had plans uh, to go to leh ladakh by driving but i don't think <laughs> i am up for it So Leh Ladakh, you are planning to go by car, or you want to no, go I've by trip, bullet or something like no, that? No, I've gone by flight once. By flight, uh, okay. it's okay. <laughs> I will miss it anyway. Okay, fine. <laughs> And what is your typical daily schedule like? I mean. Um, you start to i mean there is of course personal part of the day and then there is professional part of so typically what is your schedule during the day so uh, for the pandemic it's kind of a hybrid work right so yeah, yeah. hybrid uh, when i go to office typically you get ready and then attend office uh, at least uh, in in my previous stint my office was in a different city in trivandrum so mm. once in a month five days i have to be there that was a mandate So I'll take the flight, attend office. Office extends till. So one full week you used to be there, I and then come there, back, and okay. then come back. So anyway, mm. it was more like a, a, a break from the routine because every day you work remotely at home. You sit in one of the rooms, look at the laptop, attend meetings, <laughs> endless meetings. So the borderline is very blurred between office and yeah, yeah, home. And uh, you look beyond the laptop screen, you see a wall, right? So that is very. <laughs> and socially it is not a good thing to, yeah it's not uh, because i always used to consider myself as a very introverted person uh, but a pandemic gave me new revelations in the sense i never imagined that you cannot uh, live without meeting people okay. i wanted to meet people so whenever people call me for lunch or dinner come let's go sure, so that sure. kind of uh, social uh, you know bonding we need with people that's a learning in the pandemic and the all my trivandrum trips were more like fun for me go on a nice picnic meet people <laughs> every day evening you go for dinner so that is something people love uh, do you really work yeah of course we work we work it's not about the number of hours Correct. and work doesn't mean you have to be very serious you can yeah. do it because at, uh, when you become a professional uh, you don't have to Uh, look at everything in a very serious way as we are in a junior of course, yeah, of role, course. right? You have to enjoy, enjoy. Actually, right? So you that's what we used work. to do. We mm. also work hard. We also party hard. So yeah. it was good that way. Uh, so coming back to Bangalore in the last one week, I've been three days to office. So typical routine was like by eight thirty, I'm off, and then. It Morning. takes about forty minutes to reach office. That's okay. good in Bangalore traffic. <laughs> in Bangalore. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you know have meetings, and then by six thirty you push off. By seven fifteen you are at home. So it's a kind of a, a learning again to be uh, in the routine. Uh, otherwise, it's a hybrid work uh, culture has spoiled us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I remember. I think you know <clears throat> initially when this uh, whole concept of remote working started, lot of organizations and people thought that. it is something that is achievable over a long period of time yeah. but slowly i think after maybe you know couple of months they started realizing that people do not just want a place to work and then sitting with someone uh, you know on a regular basis let's say with family and uh, they will be happy it, it it's not like that so that's why a lot of companies i have seen that people who have announced that okay we will be you know 100% work from home going forward yeah. right and all they actually had to change their policy and then say that no no we have to ensure that people meet each Means, other yeah, you know they are some sort of hybrid yeah. working is important otherwise a uh, lot of i have heard from lot of uh, you know housewives and female colleagues and all right saying that why i have to see this person's face <laughs> day in and day out right <laughs> why doesn't it go out and then sort of you know go to office and all true, true. but yeah i think people realize and i'm happy that at least that hybrid model of uh, yeah. mandating couple of days in office and all yeah. 
Also, you work for home also. That's yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> to true. avoid. True. 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 <laughs> Correct. Okay. Now, we heard, we used to hear business continuity early and, and then of course, there's a lot of focus on cyber security nowadays. But then, the resilience part as a word, it was there earlier, but I think it was not given that due importance, right? So, as on today, there's a lot of focus. I see that there is a business continuity department or professional or sort of role which are created. And within the same organization, there are roles related to organizational resilience and things like that, right? So, what does resilience mean to you? Resilience is very uh, personal for me. Uh, uh, if you ask me what it means to me as a person. In the sense, uh, I always give this uh, quotation which is popular in the sports world. Uh, you fall seven times, you get up eight times. That mm. has to be the mantra for me for resilience. Because any sort of uh, uh, life altering uh, disruptions or events can hit us and you lose our close ones or when things change you lose your job or you didn't get your promotion on which you have been banking on for too long. True, true. Any, any sort of event or incident that hits you should not uh, push you off the rails. You should be able to get up and dust it off and move on positively mm. uh, that for me is being personally resilient and you have to prepare for all the time uh, in terms of you know envisioning the worst case scenario what can happen and absolutely yeah. and uh, in terms of upskilling in terms of your <coughs> credentialing it's very important because it's a very competitive world uh, you may have all the best of your uh, project track records deliverables and uh, degrees, but because you don't have that particular skill or a certification, somebody is passing you over for a role, uh, you will feel very bad. So, you have to prepare for everything and put your best foot forward. And if whatever happens, you just have to move on. That is uh, that capability, that quality is very important today. And ability to handle failure, you can't win all the time. Uh, today's, uh, when I look at today's kids, uh, what I see the reflection of society is in the TV reality shows. The kids who participate were very talented in any reality show across channel, very smart kids, but they can't take re rejection, yeah, they can't yeah, take yeah. failure, feel very sad. Yeah. And uh, they uh, have that sense of uh, entitlement that is also very bad. You cannot. But this should have come to me. Yeah. Why didn't, Why I didn't get yeah. it? I should be the winner, all that thing. Because kids today are pampered, um, I mean, at least in the corporate uh, sector, whom, uh, all the double income families, both uh, husband and wife, when they work together, uh, what they cannot make up with uh, their time and personal attention, they do with a lot of gadgets, a lot of toys okay. and stuff. Uh, everything, the best they give them in terms of, you know, uh, they want resources, they want toys, they want experiences. Kids spending uh, 30k, 40k for a birthday party and all unimaginable. <laughs> they are very clear <laughs> what they want. Yeah, we couldn't think about yeah, that yeah, at yeah, that yeah. point of time. And that time. is uh, all fine, okay, but uh, how are you going to be resilient in terms of, you know, when you get into some trouble, uh, when you are not getting what you want, when you face rejection, how the kids are going to handle. So that is a worrisome factor. I think uh, by and large, uh, this uh, our generation, we are able to manage. Uh, that's what my reading is from my mm. circles. But next generation is what I'm worried how resilient they are going to be, especially the millennials. And of course, the next millennials are called Gen Z, I think, mm. then the Gen Alpha. So these kids have to build that resilience as part of their personality to uh, come out. But I, I think those people have got uh, some benefit in terms of having people, mentors and gurus like Dr. Ram Kumar, right, who actually is helping them to understand what exactly are these things and then how it, they should be prepared for. Yeah. I know that you do a lot of uh, sort of sessions for the universities and things like that. So, yeah, you are right. And, and I think, you know, the way you explained um, resilience in terms of yourself as a person in your personal life, I think similarly, you know, we have to understand and sort of apply it to the organization saying that, I mean, there are failures, but then how can you make your organization so strong yeah. that, you know, whatever is going to come in future, you are prepared for that, prepared right? For Not that, that yeah. we cry over the spilt milk, right? You better try to prevent that. And yeah, 
if it happens there are learnings from that it doesn't mean that it's yeah. end of the world yeah. right exactly so a good point thank you for that and uh, now uh, during the your career like, uh, like you started from uh, early 1990s uh, right you talked about some of these things al- already earlier do you think that there was a part of time where you thought that whatever you are doing today or i mean that point of time uh, whenever you had that thought in mind uh, that is something for which you at that point of time do not have any idea about what you were actually doing so do you think that was any specific instance or something that you recollect where you thought that okay i do not know i have no idea about what i am doing uh not uh, i mean from a uh, very unconventional i will tell you it never happened uh, the thought never came to me when i was uh, pretty young in my okay. career rather when i got on to senior roles uh in the job description we had a set of uh, responsibilities <laughs> and requirements okay. the interview they spoke about when it that is abc they talk about xyz and here it is when you actually sit in the job it is actually 1 2 3 4 5 so then i thought they said something in the interview the jd was something else and what i'm doing is what it means is again it puts uh, tests us for our resilience True. in the sense it's not ideal situation to be mm. uh, but uh, because of the dynamics of business nature today yeah it happens uh, it's a very fast moving uh, thing a lot mm. of changing i mean moving parts and uh, nobody can promise you this is what you are supposed to do this is what you do yeah you and you may not be design, asked to do anything else you have to align you have to adapt and then be resilient to deliver the job mm. uh, so that way um, one or two stints i felt uh, what am i got getting into <laughs> what am i doing <laughs> they told me something and doing and something i think a lot of people will be able to correlate with you in this because there are a lot of people and professionals uh, you know around the world who have gotten into a job yeah but then they are thinking right now what the hell i am doing here yeah. because yeah. i thought that this is different and then the way it has True. come out is yeah. different yeah it turned out to be okay. very different <laughs> good what is that one thing that you wished that you would have known at that point of time which you sort of still recollect today well uh, i was pretty much ambitious and uh, almost like uh, that almost uh, did my career in i should have been little more uh, careful about pacing my speed uh, in what i wanted to achieve okay uh, if you look at my career speed in the sense you are talking about the learning speed uh, no 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 my career growth growth so, okay okay so Fine. i had again a very unconventional career mm. uh, i never worked for the proper it service companies mm. uh, all unconventional brands but more big brands in the sense in their industry number 1 2 or 3 uh, in their respective industry sectors and few of the companies are more than 100 on 150 years so old like ac companies what i'm trying to tell you is um, very early in my career i got onto a managerial grade mm. it was very helpful in understanding the uh, management thing very early miss uh, within 3 years less than 3 oh, years within first 3 years okay first 3 years i started in 2004 my p my it career before so you government. started managing people that time yeah time. yeah in 2006 okay. i I was into uh, uh, you know project manager for a large uh, uh, security services company, and I got uh, uh, cut my teeth into management decision making and <coughs> stuff like that. But what uh, uh, kept me driving was I wanted to grow faster, and that actually came back to bite me mm-hmm. because I was already above the market. in terms of oh, the compensation okay. Okay, okay. whereas uh, uh, you know i was raring to go but market was not able to uh, match it match it. so i had to plateau so when you hit the career plateauing that time you start questioning whether you are uh, really uh, what wrong you did and uh, why you are facing this scenario uh, then it actually puts you into a lot of self doubt whether you are really worth it and you go into go into that imposter syndrome Mm. So all this could have been avoided had I paced my career in a slow, steady way. But uh, always there is always, you know, a learning from these kind of, in, you know, scenarios. Yeah, yeah. and I can uh, even this <coughs> case is something that people will be correlating with because uh, I know that there have been people who sort of, you know, their focus is how to make more money, right? 
and they keep on jumping from one organization to another right no not just yeah. about money i wanted to expand my horizon okay learn, learn more things and then okay and then deliver and right. then be useful to the organization yeah, yeah so that was my motive and that actually came back to hit me hard right, later yeah. yeah yeah true true okay uh, so during this whole professional career that you have so far uh, yes. from your perspective what do you think is the biggest failure that you had and then what did you learn from it so i wouldn't call it failure some areas of learning mm mm-hmm. uh in the sense i was pretty naive in trusting people yeah that actually trusting people brought in lot of disappointments okay. lot of betrayals and stuff i was pretty oh, so you had people. some experiences and then you got into this mode of yeah yeah not, not that anyone. i don't trust even today i believe in the innate goodness of uh, everyone mm. uh only thing is i learned not to put too much trust into people just because they speak so well they are very sweet talker yeah glib talker so I would be a little more careful. Uh, I mean, very early in my career, I was not knowing about the way corporate uh, sector works, and you just trust people for what they say and what they. Later, I learned, okay, you have to more than the words. You look at the actions before mm. you, uh, you know, trust. Hidden people. actions. Hidden actions. Right. Yes, exactly. I mean, they they are saying something, but there is exactly. something else going on exactly. in them. Exactly. Okay. Then I took a very clear decision not to, you know, not that I was into any politics, but I took a very clear stance that. Uh, never get into any corporate politics always be aware yeah it's all I mean, it's like uh, you saying uh, i don't eat lions so lions should not eat me it never works corporate politics office politics always there in any organization only thing you should be knowing how to handle that and handle so, that <laughs> that's pretty important right. yeah and i think you know as you grow further up the ladder right yeah you will be by default positioned in such a situation but then you should know how to handle that handle as that. you right exactly said. okay good Uh, throughout your career i mean would you like to highlight some of the resources that you think have has helped you or have helped you right which would be helpful for you know even younger generations and people aspiring further sure uh, so one thing is your you need to be very clear where you are and where you want to go that self uh, uh, realization or self understanding is very important mm-hmm. and uh, that gives you you know ideas out out or gives you the base as to where you want to go because your ambition your drive your motivation is uh, all goes without saying then you look up to some leaders in the industry as role models so that you can follow in their uh, footsteps mm-hmm. and also model yourself on what makes them st- uh, tick the same success uh, factors you can see if it works for you then of course learning is important especially in a domain like ours resilience, yeah, resilience and right. cyber security. security data privacy learning is very important learning and learning relearning it's very it goes without saying uh, then uh, attending lot of events conferences meetings networking with leaders networking with fellow professionals mm-hmm. these and all will give you lot of uh, insights into what's happening also you meet people you get uh, you know a uh, peek into their world they could become your best buddies uh, best mentors so that's uh, connect is very important volunteering or being part of any industry associations also helps you okay. broaden your base okay. right and uh, of course now uh, in the social media era we have all this whatsapp groups and telegram groups which you can take advantage of being part of that you get lot of resources mm. so all these yeah, now i think that is one benefit that we didn't used to have, have in our yeah, earlier yeah, time yeah, right yeah, yeah. now there are a lot of things here lot and things. there that you can easily get access to true, yeah. true. today you can upskill on anything you have the resources even free you can do you have the videos you have mentors uh, only thing you need the time focus and commitment otherwise okay. uh, you can do anything and become anyone and that you have to take it out time okay. focus and commitment, commitment. right It's without very that it could not exactly okay now um, when people look for the role model and uh, you know someone thinking that okay looks like this guy is good and you talked about it briefly in the previous answer uh, sometimes people people find that you know what i thought about this guy was something else right because he is being portrayed in the social media or in public forum in this way but then actually when you have the you know one on one interaction or as a person sounds so different yeah even yeah are you, who is this guy yeah i thought i had a lot of respect for him but then i have lost that respect or i thought that he will be pretty what do you say um, guy who will who is a non uh, nonsense guy but then he is very friendly and then he is very approachable right 
So, I mean, what's your thought or experience around that? I mean, how do we judge or try to consider a person as a role model? What should we do there? What should we do? Yeah, uh, role model is there for a reason and a season today. You can't take blindly somebody as a role model. Yeah, yeah of course. That era is gone and uh, today everything runs on optics. And let me be very frank about it. Everything is run on PR, right? And whatever works for you and everyone is multifaceted, multidimensional. What they portray in social media could be the best uh, uh, facets of their personality. Mm -hmm. And person you meet them with so much of uh, hope and uh, excitement and expectations uh, as you said they may turn out to be different they could be rude downright of course so that time your uh, entire image comes crashing down about them so don't uh, put uh, i mean don't be so naive that uh, just because you admire them they'll be nice to you and help you uh, of course it works both ways and uh, when you approach them be respectful mindful of their time and then do it it works many people when they approach me they are extremely nice and you actually it makes me uh, uh, feel good about uh, connecting with them and mentoring them there are people who are very business like they just want it and uh, they just approach me and that doesn't work well with me mm. say why they are just coming to me just to get some benefit out of yeah, me. No, so it is a long term relationship uh, you have to maintain that so be nice and role models are uh, as i said everyone has multiple uh, facets of their personality just leave out uh, their uh, whatever that doesn't work for you, the other facets. Take only the positives and nobody is 100% perfect. You can't uh, expect, uh, you know, uh, you cannot do hero worshipping of those people. Yeah. They will work for some reason in some season. Do that and then move on. You always need to have somebody to look up to and nobody is perfect. So keep that in mind when you approach role models. Uh, who are the two people that most important influence of your life if i say who are those two people and uh, i mean someone who has helped you someone who you would you would credit them saying that what you are today is because of that so uh, i mean any two people or maybe three people who you think are the most important influences for you yeah many people are, as i said earlier also my role models keep changing with the times and context. my <laughs> context and my requirements <laughs> Uh, I cannot pick and choose, but since you insist, uh, of course, my mom has been my biggest uh, role model. Uh, mm. And uh, uh, I lost her when I, uh, you know, I was 25, just about I was starting my career, very tragically. Oh, sorry so, to hear that. So, I mean, yeah. you lost your mother earlier? Much, much then? earlier, much earlier. So, it was very, uh, uh, she was very, very spiritual uh, rather than religious. and. Uh, uh, she helped me a lot in my uh, you know value system and stuff mm -hmm. and i admire her for her resilience because whatever uh, life uh, threw at her in terms of challenges she was able to handle it well and uh, uh, i really admire her uh, you know being a, a daughter of a forest officer my mm -hmm. granddad worked in the uh, forest department they had very, uh, what do you call, a transferable job. Every year they get transferred to different places. And in the late 70s uh, itself, uh, she had ambitions to uh, become an IF, IAS officer. So after her oh, graduation, wow. she went to Trivandrum from Nagarkoil and Kanyakumari district where she was based and then uh, appeared for uh, uh, UPSC exam and came. The standing so, she goal. gave UPSC? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, all self-study, very, very naive, good. you know, in the 1970s, very naive. Yeah. I'll also do, why not? So, without any professional coaching or anything, I, it was a standing joke with my dad. Oh, thank God, India escaped. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was always admire her, being a, a person, you know, she had uh, so much of ambition and very uh, uh, socialite she was in her early and my, she married my dad, they, she was into the J. Surat's wing, the women wing of Jay-Z's club. Those mm -hmm. days, it was pretty big, all that. And they did a lot of events and all that. And later, much later, maybe because of the life experiences, she completely became spiritual. She was very much into the Ramakrishna mission movement and oh, okay, follower okay. of Swami Vivekananda, uh, Sri Ramakrishna and Sri Sharda Devi. And, and uh, that influenced me a lot and even mm. when my furry first book came she actually did the manuscript reading and gave me tips oh, on really? sentence correction <laughs> english vocabulary and stuff like that 
she also taught me how to be a stenographer <laughs> i get so she gave up oh you guys are you can't horrible <laughs> uncoachable <laughs> so i learned a lot from her so she is my first role model and i miss her a lot though the conversations we used to have very deep conversations i used to debate a lot and uh, yeah i miss her presence though as she lives in my heart and guides me uh, the other one if you want me to pick up uh, one corporate leader beyond our cyber security and resilience is mm. uh, uh, the country head of uh, technicolor i had a 3 year stint with them it's into media and uh, entertainment which year was this uh, this was in 2010 to 2013 okay so this technicolor is uh, the old english movie hollywood movies if you had seen color oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah i Same remember company. 1915 it was started okay. it's a french organization uh, but uh, because they are predominantly into hollywood uh, Uh, movies uh, clients are from hollywood uh, they always uh, they always perceived as an american company okay okay <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, it, now he is recently has become the managing director for asia pack and uh, very, very, very he is still with technical still with them uh, okay. he is a very very lively personality hmm. heavy hitter in the industry i learned a lot from him hmm. uh, kind of a role model for me I used to do almost zero worshiping i used to report to him and a lot of learnings uh, from his personality the way he used to handle things one incident i'll tell you uh, one day he, uh, he was just having a conversation with me and said ram i don't have all the fancy certifications you guys got uh, uh, all i have is a nose for uh, news and i know how to uh, plan nose the for uh, nose for uh, envisioning the future uh, how oh, okay, the okay. future business scenario will pan okay, out okay. with that ability only i plan what will be the uh, you know office uh, business more and how we can expand the business in terms of you know facility expansion so sometimes hiring. people will call it as sixth sense sixth that sense. That's i know that what's going on i only have that uh, sense mm. uh, with that i plan of course he is very smart he was very humble to say that though mm. uh, but i learned a lot in that 3 years stint uh, it gave me enough fun more uh, um, you know insights into how things work okay and, uh, that, that's very uh, memorable even now i connect with him we are great uh, we are very well connected in the social media so okay. i always consider him as my one of my role models so oh, what's his name again uh, mr biren ghosh mr biren ghosh yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah. good 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 yeah, yeah. okay so uh, you talked about this instances with doctor i mean with uh, mr biren ghosh right now i mean someone whom you admire of course unfortunately your mother is not there but then uh, for people who want to understand that i mean someone who has influenced your life so much how should we try to keep that relationship growing or maybe at least live right because there are a lot of people once i get bigger i move towards uh, you know my next uh, or the future life i tend to sort of forget my things which have which has helped me to come to this level right i mean sometimes it happens with couple of people so what has been your experience or what do you suggest people that how should we nurture those relationships which were there or which has helped you earlier for you to be here at this point of time i would always say don't forget your roots uh, please mm. keep in touch with all the people who helped you uh, but in my experience uh, Uh, old friends old mentors they all fall by the wayside uh, which is beyond your control because every stage you uh, grow in your career you have a different personality you reinvent yourself yeah uh, the old associates old contacts they all fall by whatever reason somehow they don't feel connected with you anymore because you already changed your level right in terms of your career your lifestyle or your world is totally different from theirs so it is a natural thing that's what i would say but you be nice to them i always connect with people but mm. if they don't respond i feel initially true, i used true. to feel very bad Absolutely. what did i do to uh, mess with them or offend yeah, them yeah. why are not nice to me like before true. sometimes you feel that yeah, yeah they start distancing, distancing themselves, themselves rather exactly. than you know you doing something because of which they are distancing exactly. it's not like that exactly i'm not sure you know they have some conceptions in no, mind that because is, uh, of which when i read a lot of thing they said in psychology that's what happens when you grow uh, you know your old friends will stop connecting with you that's yeah. a natural process of evolution and growth yeah. you can't expect everyone to be with you till the end so yeah. you'll have new connects new contacts uh, you have to adapt yourself and make your uh, life enriching 
enriching rather than hanging on to the old if old guys are still with you uh, you are very very blessed very, absolutely Otherwise, you have to move on don't keep uh, cribbing about i'll miss the, i miss a lot of my old pals yeah. right yeah. okay uh, <clears throat> i would like to focus and i think earlier you talked about this point as well where the millennials who are there today uh, mm. i have sort of heard and we have seen some cases even in bangalore where some uh, what do you say students from college they did suicide and even now you know there have been some recent instances with uh, um, one of the top engineering organization right so somehow we feel that you know when you talk you were talking about personal resilience at that point of time we feel that i'm not sure what is the reason why they do not sort of understand that this is not the end of the life right it's the life has just begun right you are at 21 22 and things like that or somewhere in the uh, late 19s or teens 19 20 but i mean what is that you think they should be growing up with or they should be trained with or they should be nurtured with that should help them to face such situation okay should it come from their homes or should it come from the college what is your take on that what do you think or how i mean we know that you know as part of different um, you know forums we sort of do some awareness training and things like that how to be resilient uh, right and like i said earlier you were talking about those points yeah but then where do you think is the missing link because you know three suicides are uh, three or four right yeah, yeah, yeah. in one month Sad. that's not yeah. done yeah right yeah. because of which i think even uh, government has to come out with some regulation so sure. where do you think is the missing link what should be done i think the peer pressure the show off culture uh, show off show off they allowed to show off and the tiktok culture everything on social media yeah. and i am successful and uh, you look at your all your colleagues your peers in school or college they all do well even there was a recent study which said uh, people who spend more time on linkedin they mm-hmm. develop that inferiority complex that i am not doing anything at all worthwhile oh really everyone gets an award everyone gets a certification everyone gets appreciated everyone is attending event only i am not only i am not doing especially folks who are not inclined to do all of them very introverted they work remotely and that gets them into that feeling they are not adequate and they are not doing well in their careers mm. so especially when i receive the recent news reports like 12 year kids they take extreme uh, decision to Steps. take their own life um you know it feels very sad as a society we have failed um i don't know what bothers a 12 year old to be have the depression uh, depression is a big word we i mean as per my generation depression i never learned until i was 26 27 there is something called a mental depression you feel sad okay you feel <laughs> yeah. sorrow something not good you got to bad marks you got yeah, a scolding you feel you feel sad, sad and then move on there was no depression. depression got to do that you go extreme <laughs> step and break up i don't know 12 year olds are talking about break up come on uh, we never looked at other uh, girls <laughs> until we were like in the college uh, i mean this is very unfortunate uh, scenario and as i said earlier Uh, ability to handle failures that uh, resilience is very important maybe at home you can be taught in a class of 50 kids at least only one would be a winner you run a, you, you participate in a sport event like a, a running race only one mm-hmm. person will be a winner you can't expect uh, just because you participate you have to be a winner uh, because the competitive world today is everyone wants to be uh, someone uh, wants to achieve something <coughs> you can't achieve all the time i had my own uh, share of failures my if you want i'll tell you my pmp me and my wife wrote together <laughs> i never wanted to do pmp we okay. already had a mba hmm. she said ram you do so many certifications come i never did any cert because i am from the development world i don't have to do any cert come yeah. let us do as a review sponsor i will do i don't have to pay i got my <laughs> mba nobody asked pmp in my career she said no no i will pay for you then we attended that uh, uh, pdo sessions all of that okay wrote. i wrote in the pearson center and then i come out uh, fully uh, tired and uh, i get the um, uh, you know sheet it says you are not passed oh. and then she comes out saying is congratulations <laughs> and uh, i said come let's go have uh, lunch it's already 2 pm i'm hungry let's go to who, who said you said i said okay. i want to have lunch well, what happened to your uh, you clear no no i didn't clear and you don't clear really no i'm hungry first let's go i'm getting a migraine i want to go you don't clear you want to have lunch i said So what? Life is not going to stop with Absolutely. this. Absolutely. I will clear. 
then it took three months for me to again prepare and then I got it cleared and frankly when I look at it between the first time and the second time there is no difference qualitatively in terms of my preparation it was one freak thing which I didn't clear but in terms of my preparation or my delivery or everything is all online online exam uh, you know multiple choice I didn't feel anything different so failure is part of life when you least expect it will hit you so people should have that moral courage to take up anything and just because uh, there is a bend in the road you should not feel that is the end of the road always go and our lives just like our careers are like driving in a dark rainy stormy night with just two headlights for uh, giving away only 10 feet 15 feet distance you can see mm. but you should have the courage to drive through the stormy night dark night and then reach your destination just because it is dark and rainy and I can't see beyond 15 feet doesn't mean end of story. You have to have that courage and uh, you always uh, gang up with positive people. Don't uh, keep negative people in your circle. Yeah, yeah. Keep your circle positive, thoughts positive and be a realist. Good to be optimistic but realistically you should know what you are capable of. If someone is being pushed who doesn't have any aptitude for engineering and has to do engineering that is not their cup of tea, please don't do it. No, you are only doing injustice to the domain, injustice to yourself. Very valid point. Right? So I was never meant for be a, to be a chartered accountant. Today, even today, I have great regard for all those chartered accountants whom I come across in stores. <laughs> but I know I am not cut out for that. And you know, uh, again from my personal experience, my uh, sister, uh, she comes from core engineering. She did, uh, 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 after engineering, she did masters along with me. We did MBA together, executive MBA and was not at all good at accounting, finance, economics, it comes from engineering. Now I'm not good at science. And today, you know, I come into a, I make my living uh, in tech world. Very cool. And uh, she lives in Europe and she works for a uh, uh, audit firm and oh, she's okay. a payroll manager. <laughs> See how life has taken us. I come from commerce, got into tech. She comes from engineering, went into finance and account. So that's how life is. So don't have too much tension. This is how it has to be. And uh, life cannot be a fairy tale, you know, uh, just like you see in movies, everything is uh, laid out and you just have to yeah, go. Yeah, it may yeah. happen for some, but uh, what is life without trouble? It's not that you look for trouble, but when trouble hits you, don't get off the rail and have that courage to go on. Have good friends who will help you, uh, who have the same mindset and goals and cheer you on and uh, go through it and successfully come out of it. That's my take on it. Yeah, and uh, I think, you know, uh, even in colleges we have seen and then in the professional world, <clears throat> people who do not get very good marks or they are not the top rankers and all, doesn't mean that they are not good practically, exactly, right? Exactly. We have seen people who were top markers there. I mean, they do not stand in front of us today because you know, the practicality yeah, aspect yeah, yeah, yeah. was something that they were not very good Atomic at. Academic brilliance is no barometer for how successful you are in your life Absolutely. today. Okay, so on that note, um, we are talking about the millennials. Uh, what would you suggest or what is that the parents should do? You know, how they should bring up the child or what should they teach them so that they are better prepared to handle these type of situation? What's your recommendation or suggestions to them? Yeah, while pampering is a uh, uh, order of the day among the double income families, they should also teach the kids uh, values, how to be kind. Today, kindness is lacking, uh, sympathy is lacking uh, mm. because the amount of violence that kids get exposed to, uh, they don't even read the newspapers, but the violence comes from movies and web series. Yeah, and, yeah, of course. And cartoons that makes them very insensitive towards uh, violence, pain and suffering. I think that needs to mellow down a lot. And uh, uh, once in a while they should uh, get exposed to the realities of life, at least uh, uh, during their birthdays they can celebrate in an orphanage or contribute some donation or sponsor a lunch in some uh, children's home so that they know life is not all rosy as <coughs> you uh, seem to be. You all study in very good schools, live in uh, gated communities but uh, if you are uh, like Lord Buddha before you became Buddha like yeah. this Prince Siddhartha <laughs> you never had exposure to anything beyond uh, your confines of your luxurious life life is going to be very difficult so that uh, reality check is very important uh, instilling the right values uh, being grounded all of that is important how 
how much do you think spirituality will uh, help in this definitely, case definitely definitely because if they have to be spiritual bit of a controversy that's why i wanted to avoid that yeah, yeah i understand uh, of course whatever religion you follow please uh, make them understand the core values the good things about what is taught in the uh, scriptures and uh, that uh, moral courage uh, moral values taught in mm-hmm. every religion is, is all good for being nice to people uh, have some humanity right all those say values are very important and uh, be alive to other people's suffering and uh, have that helping tendency uh, because we came with nothing we go with nothing so whatever uh, <laughs> uh, we are in this journey uh, between birth and death uh, we have to help people and be of use to others not about uh, making money and building accumulating property and wealth okay that is all good uh, if you are very ambitious and materialistically inclined but beyond a point uh, those material wealth will not uh, give us the satisfaction mm. so uh, be more humane be more kind uh, i always end my talks in uh, uh, schools and uh, you know in colleges and mm-hmm. universities with this quote be whatever you want to be in today's world but be kind that is very important very good. if you are not kind then there's no point saying i am super smart i am intelligent i am this that i have a mm. successful career right so always approach everyone with that uh, kindness and help people as much as possible uh, so that uh, you know you you have that satisfaction and you feel good about it uh, in giving away and helping people is what our uh, you know <clears throat> worth is not about taking all the time so little bit be more uh, uh, helpful to people that becomes a habit over a period of time and you will start enjoying it yeah. and it also comes around of course you should not do things with expectations but whatever uh, good thing you do it comes back to you that is it will, a good it will. circle <laughs> good thing yeah, to yeah. do right and, uh, you know i also yeah. have had experience on this so i always uh, tell my child also i mean both children as well saying that it's not just important for you to look at someone who is above you right it's good to have an aspiration or sort of looking at someone as yeah i yeah, want to th- exactly. be that person but then look at the people who are not privileged as you are correct, right correct. what you have got they cannot even afford that true, right true. so you all have uh-huh. have to ensure that you are also benchmarking yourself or sort of looking at people who are not that privileged who do not have those resources so you should feel happy about that and also look at how you can help those people to come true, back to that true, right true. so i think spirituality not in the sense that you have to go and worship everything what we are talking about have that sense of gratitude, gratitude. in what you have today yeah. and also have that sense that i mean if you have try to give something to others who do not have true. or who can true. can't have that no, again the, uh, spiritual values helps you being resilient also because those values will uh, stand you through help you through tough times, tough times. so just well because said. you got a lemon don't cry i didn't get the mango uh, yeah. make a lemonade <laughs> you know when you have a lemon make lemonade, lemonade. Lem- enjoy the lemonade <laughs> rather than i didn't get mango i didn't get apple <laughs> yeah, yeah. so that is very important i mean at every uh, stage in career or in your life uh, you will have to reinvent and be resilient uh, that's what i would say okay uh, what is that one myth about cyber security that you would like to set right i mean a lot of people might see this uh, uh, whatever we are talking right now so if there is one myth that you would like to break related to cyber security or resilience you can pick to choose whatever you are what is uh, that would be uh, people wrongly think it is a very core technical domain it is not so you have technical aspects okay. of course uh, security controls are heavily uh, technology focused and uh, technology oriented but uh, there are people who make successful careers coming from non tech background also so that into cyber security into okay. cyber security mm. for that matter into resilience also mm. it helps if you pick up technical skills but uh, you don't necessarily have to be coming from a technical background to make it big in this domain okay good uh, now i think that's important again because as i said being an instrumentation control engineer i saw that lot of electrical engineers went into it and all but then they had that um, what do you say aspiration that okay i want to get into it because of xyz reason so i think lot of people today uh, because sometime when i meet uh, people you know or juniors they ask me uh, sir i am not technical guy can i enter into this domain or that domain right uh, i myself i remember when i got selected at honeywell this was in 2003 right uh, i started my career in 1994 until 2003 actually i had not seen or touched a computer 
and when I joined Honeywell, everything was on a computer. Okay. Right. It was an R&D division that we had on Banagata Road. So uh, when I told my parents, I was in Bangalore giving that interview, and uh, they were in the native place. So when I called and told them, they were happy, no doubt that you know I have been selected by you know Honeywell, and I'll be working in Bangalore and things like that. But then the one question that they didn't ask me that day, but later they asked, saying that you are saying that it's a computer-based company and all the work has to be in computer. How will you handle that? And that was something that they were not aware of because they know that I had not seen or touched the laptop or computer. But then it happened, right? So I think uh, you know later I learned typing, so I can do typing even uh, in a pretty good speed. I would not say. And then I learned computer. I think all depends on if you are thrown into a particular situation how do you adapt to it that's very important Correct, yeah. rather than you know thinking that okay i should not have gotten into this uh, you know because this i have never touched computer so i cannot do this no i was clear that i have to join honeywell that was very clear because of uh, you know some reasons but then i also wanted to say that okay i mean what is that great people learn and do the computers uh, thing so i think that important aspect where people think that I do not have this competency, that competency, I am not technical, but this requires, I think there is a lot of things to learn. And fortunately, as we discussed earlier, nowadays you have a lot of resources that you can use to yeah. come to that level, right? Unlike earlier. So, uh, that's good. Uh, little personal, and you can choose if you want to answer that or not, okay? Where do you see yourself, or what do you see yourself doing after 60 years? Right? That's retirement year. So, <laughs> if you do not want to disclose your plan, it's fine, absolutely fine. Yeah. But then... See, uh, teaching is my, is my passion. I personally feel for teaching there is no retirement age. Absolutely. Right? So, I would continue mentoring, teaching. Uh, beyond that, I would like to be on the board of a uh, couple of companies because okay. I'm also keen about uh, doing that. Uh, also, I keep myself as like a, independent director, independent sort director. of thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I enter into codes and also keep following uh, the director's uh, duties, responsibilities, okay. and, uh, uh, board of directors stuff, corporate governance and stuff. So I hope uh, I would be into that domain um, and also be useful to the society, whatever, yeah, wherever. I doubt if corporate sector will <laughs> keep us beyond sixty. You know, today's <laughs> times. Uh, Beyond 45, 47 itself, people are yeah. uh, eased out of the corporate, but uh, 60 is a very far-fetched goal that way, right? So but yeah. when, you, when you talk to people today, like uh, you sort of, you know, go to a lot of colleges and then there are people who look at you as a role model. So, what is their usual question that they try to understand? I am not talking from the subject perspective, but as an individual, what is one of the most frequently asked questions that they ask you or that because you know they want to be into that domain or they want to be like you they want to be successful very fast so they want very fast very fast very quickly okay. i mean it's a millennial generation they want everything instant uh, rewards okay. so I always say that there is no shortcut to success you have to climb the stairs mm -hmm. you can't take elevator and you can't copy somebody's career somebody is uh, really good I will do the same thing, so I also want to be, you Become can't like replicate, that. you can't replicate success, mm. everyone has their own path. Mm. So I always say, find your niche and uh, keep uh, doing all the right things, put in the hard work and smart work, you will get there. Don't uh, blindly copy someone just because you want to achieve the same this thing. And you have to find your passion rather than uh, copying something. Trying to copy and, something yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. That's what I so do you see that people sort of get into a particular uh, subject? just because they find someone as a role model and so whatever he is doing i have to do or is it like because i am interested in this subject there are two types all the both the both schools type. are there okay. uh, some folks who are uh, swayed by other people's success they want to replicate blindly uh, blindly there are others who want to be in that domain for passion and they can trust and then they come there is a third category which is forced my dad wanted me to be engineer, so I am here. Otherwise, For I don't care. True. My interest is in wildlife photography. I want to yeah, yeah. Know. I remember that three idiots, no? The yeah, photographer exactly. Farhan. Exactly. Okay, okay. There are people like that as well. So I think you should find your passion and do it for yourself rather than because someone told me to or I want to be like him. Mm. It's good to have some benchmark and role model, but don't expect the same success will 
happened to you <laughs> without yeah, yeah, yeah. the right uh, things to you, you have to do right mm. so w- when you go to colleges and talk to these students apart from the you know subject uh, cyber security or information security do also touch upon some of these things in general or it's uh, focused uh, post uh, my talk yeah the q and a people do ask because some Q&A, people okay. are very much enamored and they look all the look at all the certifications credentials uh they little bit they get uh, you know uh, surprised and they are in awe sometimes mm-hmm. they want to know so i tell uh, everything requires hard work time effort passion money you should do all that if you don't do and you say i want to just become an overnight i want to be a star it never <laughs> happens only in movies it happens so have the right uh, you know uh, ready in readiness to put in the hard work and then you achieve success and do you see people who also are interested saying that okay i want to be like you to be able to go to different people or different folks and then sort of spread the awareness or teach them something do you see people like that as well in the college yeah yeah they there are people there are? who are very outgoing they okay. want to do the same and there are people who are very uh, very much into thick of things even in their college they are punching <clears throat> about their weight they are into mm-hmm. bug bounty programs they are into hall of fame of different tech companies a uh, lot of uh, basic search they already done and the exposure they have is really uh, amazing uh, when i look at them mm-hmm. their enthusiasm but out of uh, class of 60 maybe one guy would be like that not everyone oh, is so they are outnumbered so they always you know serious minded want to achieve they are moved by some passion driven by a mission they don't care about movies and bikes and gadgets all those things they are more into this Mm. Uh, those are the usual ones who are into all other distractions oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah as on today we are in 2024 just started uh, but then if i have to ask you how you as a cyber security information security expert resilience expert how do you envision the future of cyber security resilience yeah so uh, resilience is going to be the core uh, it's a very important uh, aspect in running your cyber security operations mm-hmm. uh because of the uh you know uncertain times that we f- we will be facing one from the uh, climate change uh, that is uh, going on it's going to get worse so you are saying that there will be more frequent frequent surprises uh, freak weather systems nobody thought that chennai will have uh, you know span of four five yeah, years twice true. they were hit that's by uh, rains heavy rains and flooding mm. right and different parts of the country different parts of the world also have very freak weather systems so that is from the weather aspect nature aspect second thing is the uh, um, our infrastructure itself is actually growing pretty fast and we need to have all it takes to keep it running 24/7 <laughs> uh, you never know where things can go wrong so resilience mm. is important a lot of focus is on cloud and uh, the earlier uh, focus on bcp dr is not there we talk about cyber resilience correct but uh, now of late i find many companies finding cloud expensive they are coming back to uh, setting up their own data center local infrastructure uh, yeah, local infra okay. on one section of the uh, companies i okay. find kind cloud is expensive hmm. or sometimes they have other reasons also to come back come to back yeah, because of data security, data security and issues, issues like okay. regulations and stuff so that way uh, resilience will become very critical because when you run your own stuff then you need to have what it takes to ensure there is 100% co- service continuity you can't afford any downtime right mm. and today's uh, social media driven uh, reaction and over reaction we all very know very mm. well know about it so any downtime in seconds people uh, get to know in twitter uh, this is down <laughs> there are a lot of know. memes that memes come out suddenly <laughs> so all that public relations disaster want to avoid you have to invest in a proper resilience program right we are backed by people process technology so mm. resilience is going to become more and more prominent in the coming times yeah okay uh, but do you think it will be a challenge for the new people who are going to join cyber security to yes yes because uh, resilience should get the attention and focus it deserves unfortunately uh, today it is not so people are more concerned about cyber security technologies and processes rather than resilience even large organizations uh, because they are uh, uh, their technology is more into cloud they have that false sense of uh, 
uh, you know, sec- safety and security that uh, cloud service cloud is better. Is going to take care of in the mm, end. Mm. Uh, but otherwise, uh, the earlier uh, uh, in the 2000s and all, we had strong BCP teams. Absolutely. So that is kind of uh, uh, taking a back burner at the moment, but it will come back again uh, in the future. Yeah, I remember one of the um, conferences was there where, I mean, there were a set of panelists who were talking about uh, artificial intelligence, which is the new issues. I mean, uh, very recently we have seen issues with the deep fakes and all, deep right, fakes, that have yeah, come up yeah, and then yeah, yeah. government is trying to come out with some policy and strict punishments and things like that. Uh, but then I was telling them, I mean, artificial intelligence or, you know, any of these so-called technology jargons or, you know, getting into that. One aspect is where, because you are a large company, because you are sort of role model, because you have a lot of money, you want to get into that technology, right? Without any solid business yeah, yeah, requirement, requirement, you want it to get because so that, you know, yes, we were the first to implement that. But then it's not just like that. I mean, it's like a white elephant that you purchased, right? Correct. But then you have to keep on maintaining it. Right. It's difficult. Uh, yeah. I mean, you talk about that disaster uh, recovery. Uh, I mean, we started with one server, then we thought, okay, what happens if this goes down? So we have a redundant server. Then because of this, okay, if the whole center goes, what do you have? Okay, ITDR site, uh, you go. Right. Correct. Correct. And then yeah. it has become so complex that you need a whole set of people, resources, money to handle only that part. Correct. Yeah. Right? It's a Similarly, practice. Yeah. Mm. Artificial intelligence we are seeing, but then, you know, what will happen over a period of time? Still unknown, but I think, you know, that will also be something that will eat up a lot of your resources, money and things like that. So I think, I mean, it's up to the organization, but I think they have to be very careful in choosing artificial intelligence. Yeah, yeah. That will actually impact the business positively rather than just uh, going through that. strong business value and a strong proposition. That yeah, is why they should go. Otherwise, uh, just for the sake of being, uh, looking cool. <laughs> yeah, cool, <laughs> exactly. AI That's the thing, yeah, yeah. It's going, not going to help them too much. Yeah. Okay. Is there any specific place where people can, uh, if they want to understand more about you, read more about you, where they can find you? Unfortunately, I don't have a dedicated website yet, although it's okay. been my dream project. <laughs> but you can always look me up in LinkedIn. Uh, okay. My profile is available. I'm yeah, yeah, you are... Uh, as detailed as possible. <laughs> absolutely. And I think mm. you're one of the most... Uh, mm. Celebrate. That's why I think, you know, now we have to call something as professional celebrities as well. <laughs> no, right? no, not at all. So, I'm still a learner. <laughs> I'm not a celebrity. I'm just like you. No, of course, of course. <laughs> I mean, so far, we used to use that word celebrity for people who are sort of, you know, into yeah, yeah. movies and arts and these type of thing. But I think, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. with LinkedIn, at least we know that there are people who have to be celebrated even in professional world. <laughs> Thank you. So that's a good point. So you are saying that LinkedIn is one of the best place. Yeah. And are you planning to have your own website sometime Let's soon? Let's see. It's in the works. After 60? It's <laughs> <laughs> <Huh? laughs> <be> too late. <laughs> too late. Okay, good. <laughs> anyway, so we'll see. Once you have it, maybe I'm sure that you'll be having yeah, some yeah. post for your you yeah, know, sort yeah, of yeah. people or fans to have it. Uh, what are the three learnings that you would like our people who are, uh, I mean, viewers who are seeing this show uh, to take with them, right? What are the three learnings or uh, how do you want to put it as uh, three uh, thoughts that they should imbibe through this show? Well, <clears throat> three thoughts, it's very difficult to pick and choose. But uh, what I would say is, uh, if you want to have a um, uh, above average uh, career, a rocking career, and a very active career, you have to be on the top of things, right? And uh, to be on the top of things, you have to invest in yourself, upskill, and uh, today's competitive world needs everything, right from right credentials, right certifications, right uh, knowledge, skills, mm. uh, you know, degrees, uh, and uh, right sort of uh, skill sets, uh, plus the project uh, deliverables, everything you need to have uh, so that uh, you are always uh, one step ahead of the nearest competitor and then you will do well and provided you are also agile to take up such opportunities whenever they come. Uh, Second thing is, um, you know, there is nothing wrong about being average, uh, nothing wrong about being Mm -hmm. non-competitive. You can say you can, for whatsoever reason, maybe you are 
family situation you say i can't do anything beyond i can't do upskilling i'm just happy the way i am i just go to office 9 to 6 and come home i watch netflix and then i go to sleep i have other things to worry about perfectly fine but only thing is you should not have any sense of regret later when you compare your friends and colleagues or someone from your past like your ex uh, uh, classmates uh, that they have done better when they are not in your opinion they are not worthy enough but they are doing well uh, so there should not be any sense of regret later you are fine to choose uh, your career path whether you want to be a rocking career or an average career mm. nothing wrong about it but um, yeah, you, it is you have to take full responsibility to what you are doing third thing is you have to be resilient and uh, today's uh, times layoffs are a uh, way of life earlier times uh, layoffs were pretty rare in our uh, dad's grandfather's generation layoffs were very rare unless the company locked out or something only the yeah, yeah, jobs right. otherwise uh, uh, layoffs it used to be a real shock shocker, shocker saying that how and can a company lay off yeah, yeah it is no longer a social stigma that you lost your job because of layoff you just have to dust off and move ahead and mm. today uh, because of uh, economic downturn recessionary trends people are losing jobs left right center so people have to be resilient uh, be prepared uh, be upskilled all the time always one step ahead as i said so that when something goes wrong you can always find your footing elsewhere and that is very important always think what's the worst case scenario and yeah. what you have to do next just like you plan for your business continuity worst case scenario plan for your career also and the conventional career in it industry that you work till 58 60 is gone so keep that in mind by 45 46 47 you are eased out because your salaries are ballooned you are no longer <laughs> teachable coachable you are no longer hands on so whatever you want to achieve in your career have that uh, 25 year window to do you want to see the world go on site you want to earn money uh, do as much as upskilling and get the money you want to work in different companies learn different technologies uh, get exposed to different management styles uh, different work, work cultures do everything you can beyond 45 if you are still around and you are rocking thank your stars uh, it is a bonus for you every year just as in <laughs> real life beyond 65 if you are living to see your birthday it is a bonus <laughs> same thing beyond 45 i'm not scaring you but keep that in mind if you are doing well at 49 50 51 thank you stars that means you have done something special you have something in you some skill some uh, niche area that uh, corporates are still valuing and with the oncoming of uh, ai uh, we cannot predict how it will be but we let's not be scared about ai going to steal our jobs or make us redundant uh, it's not about any technology making us redundant it's all about we are not ready for that technology we are not adapting when computers came in the 80s people had a uh, loose job all yeah, the bankers uh, banking unions were up in Absolutely. the Absolutely I remember, right? yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah so when uh, all the bankers they uh, they learned how to use computers and computer never made anything easier even with computers still today we have so much <laughs> of queues and stuff right so you learn how to use ai and adaptable to that technology use it for uh, you know work then you will still be around so point is uh, be resilient whatever technology whatever life throws at you whether it is a layoff whether it's a new technology or a new situation difficult people and today's millennials are very different uh, whether uh, you are a millennial yourself or you are handling a millennial you should know how to handle people uh, because beyond a point in your career 80% of the time it's all about handling people not uh, tech yeah. tech is only the starting point but uh, as you grow up it's about handling people and getting things done so these three points you keep in mind you will do well all the best great great points thank you so much for that Pleasure. and uh, uh, because we touched about the artificial intelligence do you really think that artificial intelligence is going to be helpful or do you think that it will be actually a disaster at this point of time what is your thought process how you would like to take it see uh, already a lot of uh, studies and uh, we have seen examples in uh, real life uh, as far as cyber security and ai is concerned it is a double edged sword AI has been weaponized by weaponized, hacker yeah, groups, yeah, absolutely. you know, APT groups, and they are uh, making uh, life hell by weaponizing AI systems and launching cyber attacks. So that is one part, the flip side. On the uh, good side of it, it actually helps us things uh, better. 
so that way it is ai is uh, both it is has good and bad parts mm, like for other uh, domains of course it makes life easier but the uh, only concern for me is don't uh, trust ai as the gospel truth because ai also is trained by humans and humans or the programmers who are is developing it they have their own biases mm. so you have to use your ingenuity and your discretion to review whatever output because you want to uh, do one program and you ask uh, any of the ai tools generative ai tools to spit out one uh, program code you can't blindly use it right so, so artificial to... intelligence is as intelligent as the person who has trained exactly, it exactly exactly okay so you need uh, don't uh, you know uh, uh, you know mortgage your natural intelligence just because ai is <laughs> yes, there sir. your brain human brain is ultimate uh ai can be a great aid for you help for you but it can never replace humans yeah like people today they are creating powerpoints they are creating you know videos and audios yeah. through ai it will become an ai so that assistant is, that's okay. it will mm. become at best an assistant maybe in higher research it can be really useful mm. but point is uh, do not get scared or don't become too dependent on it yeah, yeah, it absolutely. has its own pitfalls it has its own limitations let's not uh, forget that okay good thank you so much for that and now we would like to move to our next section which is the rapid fire rapid fire <laughs> okay. yes okay okay so dr ram one secret about yourself that probably <laughs> no one knows or maybe very few of them know uh, i have many secrets <laughs> <laughs> no. so you have to be comfortable in giving what secret uh, you want i to. never learned how to ride a two wheeler i have right. always been a four wheeler person so i can't ride a two wheeler you can't ride two wheeler <laughs> no oh, uh, that's a discovery as a teenager i wanted to ride a two wheeler i pestered my dad bullied him cried him cried with him i asked him to give me his uh, hero honda splendor uh-huh. and uh, he gave me taught me the basics but the very first uh, ride was a disaster i went and scrap my big toe lot of blood and the oh. guys at the corner they took me home and then from then on my dad said see you are wearing specs and you can't handle bikes you can't uh, manage the gear you can't manage the balance all that so go for a car i am not personally uh, you for going for a two wheeler so it's not safety uh, safe as well on mm. the road uh, safety perspective so after my permanent uh, becoming permanent in my first job is you know and buy your car damn car whatever you want to buy so that's how i became a okay. car person so that's the only secret i don't that's a revelation that you bike. can't drive two wheelers okay good uh, two hobbies uh of course i love traveling I enjoy visiting lot of new places okay uh, so that is one so have you gone to lakshadweep uh not it uh, okay. so no, okay. now i think the focus should, is there yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah yeah and second one uh second one i read a lot i read a lot a lot mm. of uh, good good collection of books what what type of books uh, management yeah. self help books earlier okay. i was into biographies autobiographies much before into all the novel stories okay uh, all <laughs> so, so reading is a habit for me so more of those uh, career or life related management hell leadership not fictional uh, stories since i moved on earlier i was into all jeffrey archer or those okay books. okay <laughs> <It was in-handed. laughs> okay good uh, what's your favorite food favorite food anything south indian anything north indian as long as it is vegetarian i okay enjoy. you are vegetarian i am a vegetarian okay yeah yeah since beginning or you yeah by birth and by choice so by I'm choice vegetarian and so i enjoy very in south india i love eating north indian food i love all the paratha <laughs> okay yeah. when i go up north i get bored i want south india <laughs> so it's kind of you know <laughs> no even i like um, you get this meals right in yeah, hotel yeah thali i love it lot hot rice and you know these sort of things so that's my favorite actually okay good uh, who do you consider only one person okay you cannot give multiple names one person who you would attribute to be your role model I would say Swami Vivekananda. He made a big influence. Okay. When I was a teen, I used to read all his speech books about him. Vivekananda's his own, book. Okay. His own sayings that okay. made a big uh, difference in the way I look at things. Yeah. And do you think that you have been able to apply those properly in your life? Uh, to some extent. What Swami Ji said is too much. <laughs> okay. What I am trying to do is, you know, whatever is, possible. <laughs> is there something in that book, or? his beliefs that you think in today's generation that's not applicable or that doesn't work 
nothing like whatever he says uh, he said uh, uh, 120 years back or uh, you know still valid today mm. right he brought a lot of consciousness in youth and uh, an anecdote i heard was when uh, indira gandhi was asked as a prime minister mm. she was asked which day to declare the national youth day in india she chose swami ji's birthday jan 12th because she knew oh. the impact he made on uh, youth of india he still a great role model i don't think he's out of uh, fashion or style in any sense okay great if dr ram mm-hmm. was not a cyber security or information security professional what do you think could have been your profession i would have become a teacher teacher or uh, become a company secretary <laughs> that was my so option too <laughs> you like teaching from the beginning uh, like kind of sub- natural for me uh, okay so i would have become a company secretary if you ask a CS. specific uh, okay. so, you know domain the ca was not my cup of tea but i was more into so do you think you would have made more money being a company secretary ship or you never know because today uh, directors make much more but board of directors are <laughs> more, uh, more prestigious you yeah. can't compare life is very different right okay yeah, yeah, you can't compare this is better than that or that is better than this <laughs> okay fair enough mm. uh okay now this is <clears throat> taking you to the past if you can go to your past what do you think you would like to change and why yeah the world view i could have been much more uh, uh, much more smarter <laughs> world view okay <laughs> no i had a very a different world view when i was a teenager Okay. Uh, but as we go along uh, it became more broader and more accepting more inclusive mm. uh, it all comes from what you feed and right so not that i got all bad things but uh, teenage is a rebellious time where you uh, get uh, enamored by one particular ideology and you think that's the yeah, yeah. thing so all that uh, things took a while to clear and get more broader perspectives i think that so if i have to put a follow up uh, discussion on that uh, today if people i mean the young generation and aspiring uh, professionals if they have to sort of expand their global what do you say understanding or international understanding yeah. uh, what do you suggest what they should do to have that visibility which you think that i mean uh, earlier you didn't have that much be open minded and uh, uh, with an open mind you can always absorb many things without coloring or being judgmental mm-hmm. when i was a teen i was more into all the uh, not exactly the hindutva ideology but more or less a very rebellious you know, that age 14 15 16 years okay. and all that then my mom one day she called me he be said and told see your name is ram kumar Hmm. the anyway, reason why we named you is you are born on a ram navmi day okay my we celebrate the star bird day not the so you are born on ram navmi day. day okay and the thing is she uh, when she was carrying me she used to write in those days in the 70s uh, late 70s women in south india had the practice of writing uh, ram naam in uh, one or two times in notebooks ah uh, yeah, yeah yeah i know so she used to write shri ram jayam every day one or two times mm-hmm. so just as she was praying uh, coincidentally or divine <laughs> blessing i was born on sri okay. ram navmi day okay so you were born in a hindu family <coughs> and you are a doctor who delivered you my mom's elder sister is a doctor mm. you now she is uh, she mm-hmm. was in mm-hmm. madurai mm. and own uh, sister own sister okay. she's a medical doctor mbbs and mm. dgo later mm-hmm. so she, she was pretty young so at that time and uh, so she brought her professor as uh, for for the delivery of the mm-hmm. me so that doctor was a christian doctor by okay. name dr bay manuel okay so that doctor got me out <laughs> and the hospital where i was uh, uh, you know born was a hospital owned by a muslim doctor couple oh by name wow taj nursing home <laughs> okay it's demolished new complexes come up that area that building area So my mom tells me, you, you were born in a Hindu family. Your delivery was done by a Christian doctor. Your uh, delivery happened in a Muslim doctor's hospital. So you are very lucky to live in a secular country. Very you good. You don't have all these notions that uh, majority has to do all that. Uh, so be uh, enjoy life and appreciate the diversity our country has given. We celebrate 
uh, we appreciate all cultures all religions we enjoy everything the there is a space giving, for everyone ah, there yeah, today true. corporate sector talks about dei right diversity yeah. equality and inclusivity unfortunately in the current uh, political narrative there is no space for that that's a very sorry thing i mean in my childhood life was much more simple and simple, more yeah, friendly we i never agree. bothered today I agree. kids in 10 year kids are telling in my daughter's school uh, a new kid joins they come and whisper he's so and so so you should never say no. such things so what he is so or she is so it's just a friend you like him get along you don't like him stay away simple you should never color somebody because of they come from one particular community or background all the thing you should not have so that kind of political brainwashing and the thing has happened that's a sorry state of affairs yeah yeah unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately but yeah okay what keeps you motivated to excel in everything you do because i have seen your journey and then appreciate your journey uh, we have seen the way sort of you know people love the way you are as a person as dr ram kumar i mean you go to so many colleges and a lot of students sort of see you so what keeps you motivated to excel well we uh, the value systems that i was instilled with when i was growing up uh, it's i'm not the regular professional you go to office 9 to 6 come home uh, watch netflix and go to sleep and repeat that every day day in day out for so many years and then say add a successful career career is one part okay today you may work for a company tomorrow you may work for someone yeah. but the knowledge and skills that you acquire should be helpful for others uh, you are more uh, dead than alive uh, you know uh, if you are not helping others or inspiring others or or doing something to uh, you know make things better so that way uh, that is my strong motivation uh, so whatever you do you make an impact Uh, it's not that uh, i'm a very celebrity or kind of a you know, very very knowledgeable expert i'm also a learner even after 20 years in cyber security i still no feel that i have to learn a lot of so many things i don't know okay so whatever i know so i tell all my young mentees uh, i know only five things in cyber security only that i will talk <laughs> today the people will tell all fancy buzzwords and when i look at the videos where people who talk about uh, artificial intelligence deep learning quantum computing one look at their face i know the guy never worked on that but he's just talking purely <laughs> on buzzwords and stuff i never do that if i don't know right. i'll say i don't know what i don't want to talk about it the motivation no, comes i i think that is one of the reason why you are a person who <coughs> are down to earth yeah. and that is the reputation right because yeah, people yeah, know that yeah. you are not an artificial person artificial. you are a real person exactly who sort of talks only what he knows right he yeah. doesn't try to bluff or you know give some false uh, notations true, to people true, true, okay true, true. so the motivation comes from being uh, helpful to people do whatever you can to no, improve absolutely. everyone we also yeah. grow along right absolutely. Uh, it's not that uh, uh, it's always knowledge when you exchange we both uh, learn learn together if, uh, exactly if i and he exchange one <coughs> rupee end of the day we still have only one rupee yeah. if i tell something he doesn't know he tells me something i don't know we both get enriched right That's true absolutely and uh, i remember that you know someone was asking me uh, <coughs> excuse me you are into consulting business right so if you teach you know someone else he will be able to do then what will be your value and all so i told him very simple people who want to learn you cannot stop correct, correct. if you do not teach him or sort of mentor him or her mm. they will go and find their way yeah. right so if they are really sort of you know dedicated or they have that passion to learn you cannot stop them yeah, right yeah, yeah. the best thing is support them give them sort of you know guidance and all so that at least they know that okay he is one of the person who has shaped up right and again sharing knowledge is the quick way to immortality if you are motivated to become immortal <laughs> people remember you yeah, this yeah. is something deepak taught me yeah, i yeah. never forget my mentors who taught me my bosses who taught me way back in the uh, yeah. early 2000 you will always remember, remember that remember yeah. good feeling absolutely and uh, the old notions of knowledge hoarding information hoarding all gone today everything is available Yeah. no point telling i don't know i won't give you absolutely you know, that, yeah, uh, yeah tactics doesn't work anymore exactly people can easily see you through like, <laughs> your reputation goes for a toss yeah. toss right <clears throat> exactly uh one thing that you believe you are not good at you would like to answer that or pass i can answer <laughs> okay please go ahead one thing things. you believe you would you <laughs> are not good at um yeah is being uh, uh, born introvert i was not at all good at uh, getting along people you mm-hmm. know getting along with people mm-hmm. but it took lot of time and effort for me and lot of confidence to build up to become an ambivert 
Mm. At will, I can become an extrovert. Okay. But at heart, I'm still an introvert. So today, you put me in a social setting, say in an informal party, I won't feel too comfortable unless I know some known faces. Then only I get along. If you put me full of strangers, I can't. I'll be a disaster. Yeah. So that's one thing I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think you are like me. So I always tell my people and my uh, sort of colleagues at the company, saying that I'm not a sales and marketing guy. Right, so I'll be very hesitant if I have to sort of go and talk to someone voluntarily and then sort of. So, what I do is, I mean, now because of business, I of course, you know, have built that capability of sort of approaching people proactively and things like that. But even I'm not that uh, extrovert. I'm an introvert still by heart. Okay, for your reportees, what kind of boss are you? I'm a very friendly, supportive boss. That's how I fancy myself. Okay. <laughs> you should ask them actually. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe. You are right actually. Serious note, yeah. What feedback I have received is uh, you are very uh, supportive, encourage them and uh, I'm not very harsh that way. And, and most of my reporters are really, really good people. Mm-hmm. Uh, they know what they are doing, very smart. And they say, no, uh, manager's success is actually reflecting on the kind of team people. they have. Okay, good. So, so far, my team has been my strength and that's what keeps me going. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you so much, Dr. Ram, for yeah, your time. My pleasure. And yeah, uh, yeah. it has been a pleasure talking to you. Again, uh, you know, I think today, whatever we have discussed, right, that, that talks a lot about how resilient you are and how you have shaped up your car- career uh, throughout the journey. Right, of course, this is, uh, I mean, we wanted this discussion not to be technical on True. cyber yeah, security. Yeah, yeah. And no, it has to be more like, you know, what this person, Dr. Ram, is as an individual and then how he has built up his uh, career. Uh, so that, you know, the people who follow you, the people who are motivated by you, who consider you as a role model, yeah. uh, what they should learn from your life. Yeah. Right. So with that, thank you so much for your time and it's a pleasure talking to you. Same here. We'll meet up again. Thank you Deepak for having me here in this uh, resilient root uh, session. I'm very honored to be with you and share my thoughts and uh, amazing host you are, the kind of uh, questions (laughs) that gave me an opportunity from, uh, very different from the usual interviews you talk about uh, cyber security and uh, subject matter. But here it was more of a freewheeling discussion on Uh, personality traits and stuff like that very up close and personal and really appreciate your time and giving me this opportunity thank Thank you you so much thank you so much much. and with that ladies and gentlemen uh, we close this episode of uh, resilient root so the first episode of this show right we had dr ram who i consider as a resilient root right so there is a lot of learn a lot of things to learn from his career as you could hear that Right. So uh, do well, be happy, be prepared always and try to be resilient. Thank you so much. Dr. Ram, again, thank you so much. That's a small token of appreciation from our side. Right. You know, this will be something that is well deserved by you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for being a resilient.